So, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Hello there, and welcome to my world record treadmill attempt. Mm -hmm. I'm here at the beautiful Richmond Olympic Oval. Uh, Going to be attempting a 10K race walk treadmill record here. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in and joining today. Uh, it's been a bit of a journey getting this set up, so I'm really excited to see what we can do and have some fun with it. And uh, yeah, this is all in promotion for the Ottawa Race Weekend, their virtual races. All of, you can sign up all around the world, uh, walk or run your, you know, your 10K or your 5K or your half marathon, your marathon. You know, see what you can do. Go out there and sign up for the 10K and compare yourself to to whatever I'm able to do today. Um, just get out there, be active, have some fun, and. Uh, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a great journey. So I want to say a quick thank you to the Richmond Olympic Oval, all the staff here that have been helping me out. Uh, tremendous support here. It's been it's been amazing. So thank you so much to, to helping me out here. Thanks to Noel for helping set this whole thing up. Uh, Ottawa Marathon, obviously, uh, for supporting this and putting walking categories in and having their virtual race walking championships as well. It'll be a lot of fun. So thank you to you guys. Thank you to Sarah for helping me out today, putting up with me, all that stuff. Um, I've been pretty stressed out the last week, so it's been great to have that moral support there. And uh, thanks to Elisa as well for bar lending me some equipment, helping talk me through some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, let's, we're going to get ready to go here, so enjoy. All right, we'll say goodbye to Evan of the past and welcome Evan of the present. So thank you guys for joining me today. I'm here with my brother, Adam Dunphy, uh, and we're gonna sort of talk through, talk through this effort we just had here. So thanks for joining us and feel free to comment, leave comments and uh, yeah, we'll, let's, let's ask some questions and we'll just chat away here, Adam. So Adam, thanks for, thanks for doing this with me. Three, four, oh, one, thanks for having me on. on. So, uh, on your mark, go normally used to. Uh, traditionally, you're on a road course. Occasionally, you'll find yourself on a track, but uh, today, uh, you're going on the treadmill at this point, or as you kick things off here. Uh, what pace have you set the treadmill at? So I'm going to ramp it right up here. So we see we got it going. The clock has started. The treadmill's a little bit slow, so it takes a little bit of time uh to get going but once it's up to speed i set it at 9.3 miles an hour so that's right on four minute k's uh the goal of the day was to try to break 40 minutes um that's sort of what i thought was going to be doable and uh yeah so i just sort of set, set right off at that pace and was hoping to just get a feel for how that how that was and adjust as need be from there so um and you can see on the on the display there we got my heart rate set up too um, so monitoring that as well and just seeing like how the effort feels and, and going from there. Now speaking of uh, a sub 40 10k, that is something you're obviously familiar with. You've got the Canadian record in 10,038.420. So how much, you're obviously ramping up Everything right now because good. you've already qualified in Tokyo Olympics. So you're gearing towards that right now, but how much year up does it take for you to get to the fitness level where you could comfortably do a sub 40 10 um it certainly takes takes a bit of uh a bit of training for me to get fast I, i'm not a particularly fast athlete I, I definitely prefer the the longer stuff so especially training through the winter you know normally i'm down in australia for a summer of training uh during their summer with a uh, a big group of international athletes, you know, two dozen athletes that can all push each other. And so I get a lot of really good speed work done usually early in the year. And this year was different because uh, being on my own in Vancouver uh, through the winter was a little bit harder to get those faster speed sessions in. So my endurance and my, my base fitness has been really, really good, but I've only really just started now to put in those really hard training sessions that are needed to, to really get fast. So. Um, you know, I've had a couple, couple hard efforts and, and I'm feeling really good. So I'm excited to see what happens once I start building on a few more, uh, you know, a few more of these, these heavy, high intensity speed sessions. 
Now, as in any race walk event, there are judges uh, watching you walk right now. Uh, Stafford and Lily Whalen and Brian Cavenier, they are watching this stream just to make sure you're doing everything legal. And uh, for those who might not be familiar with uh, what it takes to do a race walk legally, there are two rules. You have to have one foot in contact with the ground at all times, and your front leg has to have the knee locked. And that's part of the fun when you start race walking is, okay, you think you've got the hang of it, but then you get a little too far ahead of yourself and uh, you pick up some warnings and uh, a couple disqualifications along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you'll remember when we were in Minneapolis for my first ever uh, Team Canada appearance back in 2006. It was the first time putting on the Team Canada jersey, my first time racing 10K. I think you were racing the, the 5K that day as well. And you know, I was racing the, uh, hey, there's a bunch of people here, who wants to do it? I don't remember what the distance was, but I don't think it was planned. Oh yeah, you did something. Um, did something. And I got, so 16 or 15 year old Evan at the time, my first ever 10K, I, uh, I picked up my third red card and got disqualified about 10 meters, 20 meters from the finish line. And I just ran, ran about two kilometers down that really nice bike path in Minneapolis and hid under a bridge and cried for 20 minutes before sulking my way back to the, to the rest of the team. And so that was really tough. That first ever, you know, big competition that I had uh, to get disqualified was uh was a you know a bit of a learning experience and I, i've only been disqualified uh i think once since then so i definitely learned from that and improved my technique well no you certainly have and as you mentioned uh, disqualifications and warnings aren't something you, do, uh, you pick up a lot of and as we see here through about 440 now and i just have to clarify this for myself as well as everyone else your distance is being measured in miles, correct? Yes, yeah, the, the, these Woodway treadmills are great treadmills. Unfortunately, this one I couldn't turn into kilometers. So um, we're looking at 6.22 miles for the total distance. Uh, 9.3 miles an hour is about four minutes per kilometer. Um, and uh, so each mile is 1,609 meters. Um, so roughly four laps of, of the track plus a little bit. Um, so we're looking at, I think a kilometer, every kilometer is about 0.63. So that is something that we'll keep an eye on on the dashboard there. And we'll try and do the conversions as they come up. Uh, yeah, I was, I was kind of mentally here trying to break it up into just, okay, like, all right, six minutes, uh, six minutes down, you know, what I got, 34 minutes to go get to 10 minutes okay 10 minutes I'm a quarter of the way there and I was kind of breaking it up into percentages at this point but you know just settling in there you can see my heart rate setting at sitting there at like sort of 169 170 that's pretty much the upper end of my threshold uh, my max heart rate I did a vo2 max which is a, a, a maximal effort test that determines you know how much oxygen you can get to your muscles um, which is a really good indication of, of how, how fit you are. It's not the only indication, but it's a pretty good indication. Um, and my max heart rate during that test was only like 187. So getting up to 170 for my heart rate, that's, you know, working working hard here even early on, even though only a mile into the, into the race. Yeah, there you go. Just, just hitting that mile down about 6.30. So the 2K split if we're converting should be about 1.26. Uh, where you can see right now uh, 1.04. Yeah, so I've ramped, I've ramped the pace up here after a mile. I was feeling pretty good, so I bumped it up to 9.4. Just get myself a little bit under that, uh, you know, that four minute per K pace. Now you're doing this at the Richmond Olympic Oval, as you alluded to. Uh, you may remember it, uh, well, from its original intention of the host venue for the long track speed skating events. 2010 Vancouver Olympics. Since then, it has been converted into really a, a sports hub. Uh, lots of different things going on there. Uh, you were in one section of it on the Woodway treadmill, but uh, as we saw at the beginning in the interior shot, lots going on. Uh, 
not as much as normally would be, of course, still in the middle of the pandemic, but uh, this is where you, uh, you spend a lot of your time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I use the Oval as a training facility now and then. Um, there's a really good uh, high-performance gym downstairs that I have access to. Not that I do a ton of, of lifting, but I, I do do my fair share. And um, I, I play uh, pre-pandemic times. I play ball hockey here, actually, just on the other side of this curtain. Actually, is where I play ball hockey. Um, so I still love I still love being able to get out there and and and, and play some hockey and. You know, it's it's probably not the the smartest thing to do as a, as an elite athlete because there is an injury risk. But I, I just have way too much fun with it. So um, yeah, I spend I actually work at the Oval as well. So they're, they've been a great employer of, of letting me work part time and picking up shifts here and there when I can. There's an Olympic Museum upstairs, which is the only official Olympic Museum in Canada. Uh, it's got awesome awesome little uh, games. You can try out a bobsleigh. You can uh, you can try ski jumping. All these different virtual events. They're actually just completely rejigging the, the museum now to make it even even better so um, that's a ton of fun I, I really love the atmosphere here and we have a ton of national team athletes actually training here I noticed when I was doing this effort um, Alana Yip grabbed a, grabbed a quick video of me and posted it to her Instagram and she's going to be representing Canada uh, at the Olympics this summer in uh, in the sport in sport climbing so the climbing wall here is the is uh, all totally decked out to be an official climbing center for the you know, host international competitions. They're looking to host world championships here. Um, uh, and um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great facility. The women's national field hockey team trains here. Uh, lots of elite athletes roaming around, walking around. When I have school groups coming through that I'm like working with, will sometimes be like, oh, hey, you see that girl over there? She went to the Olympics. And they'll come over and give a little chat to the kids. And it's a really cool place to be in a really great atmosphere. Into your third kilometer now, uh, your 2K split right around 810, I believe it was. So I'm ramping up your speed a little bit. And uh, again, we're using the mile designator on the treadmill right now. So your 3K split would be 1.89 on here, and you're still at 9.4 miles per hour pace. How are you feeling at this point? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a, I'm a little bit, um, you know, I'm getting into that groove. I'm feeling kind of good. My heart rate's kind of dropping here, which I'm, I don't know if that was because I was settling in or because, you know, technology's not the, not, not the most accurate, but. I was, so I'm kind of jigging my heart rate, making sure it's connected, because it kind of drops here and be like, oh, that's that that's feeling easy. So uh, I'm certainly feeling like I'm in a groove here, but I'm still only 25% of the way through, and that's kind of what I'm telling telling Sarah, saying, okay, a quarter of the way, like, all right, let's settle in now, and let's do the next half, and then and then push hard the last quarter. And Sarah is the uh, the woman you saw pop up early on in the frame. Uh, she's been helping you uh, set this all up. Yeah, yeah, we spent, uh, Sarah and I spent about four and a half hours here last night trying to get everything to work and uh, learned a lot about technology and, and what, of what the limits of our capabilities were. Um, but, you know, tons of thanks to the Oval as well for helping us in every way that they could. And uh, Jacob at the Oval here, he stayed about three hours after his shift ended last night just to, just to help out and make sure, make sure we had everything we needed. So, um, you know, really grateful for that. So you can see I've shifted the pace up again to 9.5 uh, miles an hour. So clearly, I'm just feeling good. Just feeling like I, was want, I can get under 40 now, and, and I just want to sort of see how much I can get under 40 at this point. And getting close to that three-kilometer split time. At uh, 11.44 on the clock. Starting to get into that, or close to that four minute per kilometer pace. Well, we're we're under, so 11.44, 11.44, that's averaging 3.55s, if uh, if that's what you clocked for for uh, for 3K there. Just through 3K, I think about right now. Okay, yeah, so a little bit over. 12.09 mark. Yeah, okay, so we're... We're a little bit over, but we're making up time. Uh, we're above, we're under four minute per K pace now. So every every step is is making up time on that four minute four minute barrier. 
a situation like this, obviously it's different because you're not in a race, you're on a treadmill, but let's pretend and say you are on course and we'll say it's a 10K. You've found a nice comfortable pace now. When would you feel is the appropriate time to start bearing down, or how much longer in the race it would be left when you would say, okay, now is the time to really bear down and uh, make up even more time? Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm more of a even split uh, type of walker. So when I set the Canadian record on the 10K on the track with 38.53, I, um, I was, fairly even splits and then last kilometer was able to kick down a little bit so as, as tired as you are there's always that little bit more like especially when you hear the bell on the last lap you always are able to dig just a little bit deeper uh, and, and and find that extra little bit so but I, I like I because of my my tendency to be you know more of the endurance side and liking the 50k I, I tend to just try to find a, a steady pace and settle in and just find a rhythm um, you know athletes like Perseus Karlstrom, who's you know, probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, in the world over 10K right now, uh, walked a 38 low a couple years ago for, for 10 kilometers. He's the kind of guy that can just shift the pace and drop, you know, drop a 345 in the middle if, if he's racing someone and he, and he feels like he wants to drop them. Um, I don't have that same capacity. So I'm just kind of find a pace, settle in, and just try to hold that till the end. Now, normally when you race, you do wear your hat. And I have to ask at this point, you are racing indoors. You're working out indoors, whatever you want to call it. You're racing against the clock today. Is the hat just a force of habit at this point? Yeah, I mean, the hat's great. The hat keeps the sweat out of my eyes, um, which is a big thing. You can see how much I'm, I'm wiping the sweat away. I was, I am dripping sweat at this point. Um, there's actually, you can, you can see it points like sweat coming off the back of the treadmill. Um, so I, it's, it's really hot in here. So, um, the hat just really just helps keep, uh, keep sweat on my eyes, keep my hair intact. You can see my little, uh, Christmas bobble <laughs> hair bobbing around. Um, yeah. And also the hats are awesome. These are, these are my Cielli, uh, Cielli hat. Cielli is an awesome Canadian company. Uh, that just, it's a great community. It's, it's, it's just, you know, they're just trying to do good things and at the same time they're selling awesome hats um so certainly check them out um they've been a huge supporter of me so uh if you want to help support me you can support the people that support me um yeah well speaking of hair when was the last time you actually got your hair cut so the last time i got my hair cut was january 2nd 2020 just before uh my best friend brennan reading's wedding down in australia and yeah, so we're going on, you know, we're coming up to, you know, a year and you know, 17 months or so next week. So uh, it's been a long time. And I know you've been growing your hair out as well. We, we, I think both you and I now have longer hair than mom. We do, and, but I didn't know yours was actually going for longer than mine. Mine dates back now to March 11th of last year. <laughs> but uh, it is starting to get a tad annoying. But uh, I'm base in Ontario and I don't think I'll get the opportunity to get a cut anytime soon unfortunately. Of course, of course. So yeah, and, and we'll want to look at. Uh, actually, uh, you have passed into the four kilometers, you hit four kilometers beyond that now. And uh, still holding at that 9.5 mile per hour pace. Yeah, we actually we got a... the training been ramping up as of late. Obviously, the Olympics is the big competition, but you are taking a shot at a record today. Uh, how have you adjusted your training uh, for this? Yeah, I, you know we've known we've known that I was going to be doing this for a while now, and this actually ties in. Perseus uh, asked in the chat here, and, and if you, you guys are watching, you have any questions or want to know anything, please pop it in the chat, and we'll be happy to answer it. Uh, Perseus asked, you know, why I decided to do this, so looking out we, we've been planning this for about a month now so i've been able to work it into my training it's a, as a hard 10k effort um it's kind of in line with what i would normally do once a week as, as hard efforts um you know it's a good tempo session i'll do a 40k long walk tomorrow morning um but the whole reason behind behind doing this was one to promote 
you know, just to promote walking, we're, we're teaming up here with the Ottawa, Ottawa Marathon and Ottawa Race Weekend um, to do a virtual, vir virtual Canadian race walking championships in, in their half marathon and, and their 10K. So, you know, we're promoting that a little bit. Um, it's really cool. The Ottawa Marathon have a walking category for all of their all of their events that you can you can sign up to walk or you can sign up to run and i really love that because i you know i talk to so many people that say oh you know i'm not active i i just i just walk you know i go out for a walk every day but i'm not active and and yeah that counts like going out for a walk uh counts as activity and if you want to work a little bit harder you can you can push yourself a little bit harder and still be walking um you know so so giving that opportunity and saying hey you can sign up for this race and you can walk it you know whether you're walking 10k and in two hours or you're walking it like like me today in under 40 minutes it's still activity it still counts and and so i really love what the ottawa marathon's done to kind of help promote that idea so i just wanted to like do this today to help promote them and and hopefully get some people to sign up and just you know promote walking as a valid form of exercise to to get out and especially this year with the pandemic and any time we can get outside has been so valuable and and walking and exercising has been such a huge part of that for for so many people so um that was kind of the goal behind today's effort was just to just to you know get out there and promote promote race walking and, and try something different and uh and yeah just, just have some fun with it so 3.1 will be the halfway mark for you yeah 3.11 will be our will be our check-in point for halfway yes if you want to round up yes 3.11 50 seconds to 20 minutes and you can see your heart rate still in that high 160 range how are you feeling at this point it's starting to get pretty pretty tough uh, i'm just trying to convince myself that if i can just lock it in and survive uh the next 10 minutes that it then the last 10 minutes can kind of uh uh hopefully you know hopefully grind through it but I was feeling pretty good with the pace here. Um, I was excited to see what my 5K split was, just to know what, what I was working with. And, you know, here we come through about 1950. Um, so that was good indication of, okay, here's what pace I'm on. I ramped up the, the pace one more time, and I think just wanted to settle in at 9.6 miles an hour and just see how long I can hold this for. So with the 5K split, this is even math I can do. This puts you on pace for 39.40, which would obviously get you under that 40-minute threshold you were looking to work under. Yeah, so at this point I kind of knew, okay, as long as I don't have to press the negative sign on the treadmill, everything from here on out is going to be getting me further and further under 40. So. Um, you know, I was, I was feeling pretty confident at this point that I wasn't going to have to hopefully press down on the treadmill at all. It's, the treadmill is such an interesting place to, to do a race on because you don't choose the pace. You, you know, you, or you, you pick the pace, but then your legs just do it and you have to keep up. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, like, can I, can I bump this up one more? Can I bump it up one more? And um, it feels easier to go up in pace than down. But it's just that scariness or weariness of, okay, is it too early? Is it too early to bump it up and, and hold 9.7? Yeah, I think, okay, I'm going to try and hold 9.6 again for another five minutes. And then I'll try bumping it up. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, people a often ask me, like, what I think about when I'm doing, you know, especially a 50K or something like that. And a, a lot of the time I'm, like, negotiating with myself and being like, okay, how do I feel? Like, can I push more? Can I? So the treadmill really amplifies that and it's kind of this conversation of myself of oh like can i press that up symbol can i like can i you know can i find 0.1 kilometers an hour more uh ooh, i don't know and it's, it's a big negotiation does your mind wander at all though during a 50 kilometer because that's a lot of time you're out there for yeah 50k 50k you try to let your mind wander or i i try to at least in the beginning that first sort of 20k is just okay like think as little as possible I know what I need to do with my fueling and my hydration so then it's just kind of like all right settle in feel comfortable feel easy don't think too much and then that last 30k that's when I really start to think and plan and say okay well how am I feeling how are those around me looking can I push the pace is this pace too fast and it there's like a constant uh at least for me there's a constant 
internal conversation going on that that keeps me uh, engaged and and uh, I never really find too too much that my mind strays and we race on a 2k loop and, and people always ask like oh aren't you bored and it honestly never even really crosses my mind it's just I'm so focused on on what's going on inside my body that uh, that that occupies definitely enough enough space so you can see now like the heart rate has has flown back up to you know high 170s into the 180s um, so working really hard now if you take my max heart rate as 187 um, you know 180 is uh, what is that that's you know 96 percent of my max heart rate so you know working pretty pretty close here to to all out with uh, you know with just under 17 minutes to go here and 3.73 miles will be your six kilometer split and uh, looking again you've ramped up the speed on the treadmill so uh, we'll continue to be under that uh, four minute per kilometer pace You approach that uh, six kilometer split and go through that in 2343. So, yeah, so if you take the last, uh, what were we the last split at 5k? We were that's a 353k. Yeah, so that's uh, that pace the whole way would be 3850, which is uh, about what my Canadian record on the track is. Uh, 3854 is my Canadian record on the track, so. Yes. Um, that would be about 9.6 miles an hour for the whole 10K here. And that's not the only Canadian record you have. You also have the 50 kilometer record, which you set when you finished fourth at the 2016 Rio Olympics. You walked uh, that 50K at 341.38. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that was that was pretty a pretty amazing a pretty amazing day because the conditions weren't ideal for racing fast. It was it was pretty hot, um, which you can attest to. Standing out in the <laughs> in the sun there for for three and a half hours with a couple. Uh... Oh, we were okay. We had beer. That's true. Yeah, you had the cooling effect of beer. Um, I had the funny thing about that race. One of the few things I remember from Rio, because there aren't a ton. I, I, I definitely have some blind spots in that race but one of the things I do remember is early on uh, with you and uh, and all the UBC and SFU supporters that were there and friends and, and family that were there watching you were very very excited early on in that race and you were banging on the sides and, and yelling and cheering and I I remember telling you about 3k into the race that it was a really long way and you had to pace yourself in your cheering um, which... and when you yelled that at me you were on the opposite side of the from where we were. <laughs> so I took your advice, I went off and I got a sandwich because we had to get there so early that morning I didn't have a chance to eat. <laughs> but then I felt guilty while eating this sandwich because here you were in an Olympic 50 kilometer race and I was eating a foot long sandwich. So whenever you came by where we were standing, I hit the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I um. I stopped eating it, but I hit it. <laughs> but I still had some sandwich in my mouth, which I was hoping that you would be too focused on other things you wouldn't notice. Yeah, and I, I mean to be honest, I think towards the end of that race, I was probably more jealous of of the beers than the sandwich. Um, but uh, I don't think there were any left by the end. Of the race, so <laughs> there wasn't going to be one for you if you had stopped. <laughs> I remember in uh, in Moscow at the World Championships in 2013, I completely imploded and, and blew up with you know 10k to go or so, and I was just slogging my way to the finish line. And uh, my teammate Niaki Gomez was on the sidelines cheering for me. And at one point in the race, I came by and he said, "Oh, like, hey, like what, like what do you want right now?" And I'm just like, "I don't know, pizza. Like, can you go? Get, are you able to get me pizza right now? Like, I could die, I'd kill for some of that at this point." But it's weird that the cravings that you do get in, in the races, but. Um, yeah, like in a, in that 50k in Rio, I you know wasn't taking in solid food, but I still took in about 1,500 calories worth of gels and sports drink and uh, and 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 the like. So you do still take in a lot of fuel because you're burning tons and tons to to walk that pace for three hours and 40 minutes. And we're coming up to your 7k split time. That'll be 4.35.
just at 27 and a half minutes now. So 43.5 will get you in at 27.34. So another. So that is a. Nine. I math quickly in my head. I believe that's a 351. 351. That sounds. Yeah, that sounds about right. So again, ramping it up, banking time under 40. I think at this point in the race, in the race, I was thinking, okay, like, can I get under? Should be able to get under 39 and a half. Um, I do a lot of time math while I'm walking. I know some athletes don't do it at all, but I'm, I'm sort of thinking, okay, if I keep this pace for the, for the last bit, what will my time be? And, and negotiate myself a little bit. So it was hard on the treadmill, and I don't know the distances and the paces off, off by heart. But I knew at this point that I was going to get well under 40 minutes. Um, and now it was kind of like, okay, how much lower under 40 can I can I go? Uh, we had a question on the, on the YouTube stream here asking if I if I if I'm talking while I'm uh, while I'm walking. And at this pace, I certainly can't hold a conversation. Um, but you know, I'm I'm able to relay sort of short snippets of information. So I was I was uh, relaying back to Sarah. Um, okay, like two thirds of the way done, like we're almost there, or like 10 minutes to go or, or and that sort of stuff. Um, and typically in a 50K, the effort's a little bit lower where I'm able to uh, to be more conversational. So I can, I can relay information to uh, whoever's on my drinks table. I can sort of tell them if I need to make any changes to my nutrition plan, if I need something different on the next lap, um, especially in Doha when it was so hot at the World Championships 2019 being able to come by and, and sort of relay to them uh, how I'm feeling, what I need uh, is really good. And, and uh, you know, you're not talking conversationally to the teammates and, and, or, or athletes around you, but you can, uh, you can still maintain sort of a little bit of, uh, of talking. Now the drinks table is not just as simple as it sounds. You're not just walking by, grabbing a water bottle and tossing it. There is a lot of science and preparation that goes into A, what you're drinking, and B, some of the other things, uh, more solid foods that uh, you will take in during the race. Yeah, I treat, it, I treat it very scientifically. So before 50K, I'll have a spreadsheet with each of my drink tables set up, and, um, and we'll have, uh, I'll have all my bottles made up. I know what percentage of carbohydrates my bottles are. And that will change based on, uh, you know, how hot it is. If, if, if the conditions are hotter and I need more fluids, I'll have to make us a, a lower percentage carbohydrate drink. So we take into account all that information and then plug it into a spreadsheet to make sure that I'm getting enough fluid, enough, uh, enough salt, enough um, calories and carbohydrates. And then my, my race staff, whoever's on my drinks table, um, which we have available to us every lap. So on a 2K lap, we have it. We can plan it out for my drinks every two kilometers, and I'll have like down to the milliliter how much I'll be drinking each lap. You know, it's usually around 150 milliliters per lap, and we have a scale uh, at the drinks table, and, and the drink staff will weigh the bottle before and after, so they know exactly how much was drank, and they'll relay that information to me the next lap if I need to drink more or less, or if I was, you know, way under or way over. So it really is down to a science. And then in, in Doha, when it was 30 degrees and 80% humidity, there was also the added, added, you know, how do we deal with the heat? So doing all of our, our cooling and, and having little like ice, um, we took women's stockings and cut them up and, and shoved, uh, shoved crushed, crushed ice in them and tied the ends off and made them into little neck scarfs. And, you know, none of it was high tech, but it was, uh, it was certainly, certainly useful and, and was changing that out every lap. So. Um, you know, coming down the drinks table, grabbing a bottle and a new hat, and my hat would be full of ice and different towels and different cooling stuff. It was, you know, it was, it's, it's quite the effort to, to just, you know, grab all that stuff and hold on to it. Through 8K and 31.24, so that's a 350 kilometer. Yeah, so, so ramping it up still. Um, at this point, I'm thinking, Oh crap! Like I might be able to get into like the low 39 minutes, um, but I was working pretty hard at this point. I was really starting to struggle, and math kind of went out the window. I wasn't really able to think about what I needed to do to get to certain times. It was just take it one minute at a time, knock off, you know, knock off the next minute, folks on the next minute, go from there. 
We can just see it just did take in some fluid. What is in the water bottle? Uh, so today it was just Powerade. Uh, just went to the store and bought a Powerade and put that in the bottle. But uh, uh, so kept it simple. Is that something you would normally do when you're training? Just uh, sports drink? Yeah, especially um, like once I get closer to to races, I'll start experiment. I'll start using like the the, the the drinks and the mixtures that I'll actually be using in the race. But um, it can get pretty expensive. Um, so I'm I'm pretty pretty cheap. So most of my long walks these days, my 40ks, I'll just be I'll have maybe a Powerade and then I'll go and buy a two liter bottle of no name cola uh, for like 97 cents and and be drinking just uh, flat flat cola because uh, it's got tons of carbs in it. Um, so, you know, I can do that and, and, a, and a 40K long walk only costs me, you know, maybe $3. Whereas if I'm doing my, like a race nutrition practice, um, a 40K long walk could cost me like eight bucks. Again, our judges, uh, Stafford and Lily Whalen and Brian Cavanier all watching right now. And uh, I don't think you've gotten a warning yet. Uh, can you verify that for me? Yeah, so the judges today, they're gonna be actually, it'll, we'll, we won't know until it's over. Um, they'll, they'll be relaying their own information back to Brian, who's the chief judge today. Um, and then I'll, I'll find out afterwards uh, what the verdict was. Um, that was just the, the easiest way to do it today. So um, don't really know at this point. Um, hopefully the judges are, are fine with what I'm doing, um, but it will kind of be a postscript to this whole thing. Um, but it'll add some drama. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, should, should they, should the judges be pleased with how I look and, and how I'm going here? Um, you know, the treadmill has been calibrated and verified that, that it's accurate and all that stuff. And the judges will verify that my technique's good. And we had all the official amount of watches on it and stuff. So, you know, all this is going to count to the official to, to, you know, trying to establish an official race walking treadmill world record which um you know has hasn't been done yet so you know we're kind of just putting the gauntlet down and 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 laying the challenge out to all the other race walkers out there to you know go and, and try this themselves and uh and and see if they can they can beat the time we're coming up to your 9k split now that'll be 5.59 miles and you will be through that in Thirty-five So that is another 350 kilometer split. So consistency over these last few kilometers, 351, 350, and 350. Yeah, and I've bumped the treadmill up again to 9.8. Um, I'm starting to think here how far I got left. I know I'm close to 39 minutes, uh, but I'm not sure how close I'm gonna be, so. I'm kind of trying, you know, I'm working near max effort right now, but I'm also trying to figure out in my head what I need to do, because I'd like to go 38.59 rather than 39.01, but I don't quite know what I need to do to get there. See, so your heart rate has uh, jumped over the uh, 180 mark, uh, 181 right now. I did see it jump up to 182. There it goes, right on cue. So you're in the final kilometer now of your 10k. Is there any temptation to uh, hit the 10 mile per hour speed on the treadmill? Just such a nice round number. There is, yeah. Certainly, certainly. I'm, I know that I'm gonna gonna finish at 10. I just at this point not confident of how long I can hold that for. Uh, 10 miles an hour is about 16 k's an hour. Uh, like 345 per kilometer pace. Uh, and I haven't walked a 345 kilometer <laughs> this year. Um, so I'm thinking about it, but I'm also a little bit scared. I, I know I'm at my max. You see my heart rate jumped up to 185 there. Like I'm pretty much at, at max effort here with, uh, you know, with, with 500 meters to go. And so there I bumped it up. 6.21 is going to be the, uh, what you're looking for you're right there. on the distance. So yeah, so now I've hit I've hit uh, 10 miles an hour, so 345 pace. Um, you know, heart rate there is. Right I'm just watching that 
distance ticker go up ever so slowly by 0.01 miles, just willing it to, uh, to get to 6.22. Um, and so I know here I'm about half a mile, so I got, uh, or sorry, um, a quarter of a mile. So I got quarter one lap mile, to yes. go. Yeah, I got, I'm on my last lap. So bumped it up to 10.2. I knew I was going to be really close to, to 39 minutes flat. Uh, so just trying to, just trying to see if I can get there in this last, uh, last 300 meters. Cadence uh, picking up a bit here at, uh, Yes, up to 10.2 miles per hour on the treadmill. What do the legs feel like at this point? Pretty, pretty sore. Um, the treadmill's pretty forgiving, so so that's nice. I, I uh, there's no pounding or anything like that, so that's kind of nice. I just just trying to coordinate my legs with my heart. My heart's working at pretty much full effort right now, so it's just kind of getting the legs to keep up to it and uh, and trying to maintain my technique as well. Um, yeah, we see here we're coming up with uh, just that, that last little bit, really pushing hard here. Heart rate is, is hovering around my max. Um, I know it's going to be close to 39 minutes, so but I'm just, I'm too weary. I'm too, I'm work, I, I couldn't ramp the treadmill up anymore at this point. I didn't trust myself to be able to get to the, uh, the speed button without, without uh, well, causing harm to myself. So I was just trying to get to 6.22 and there it is. Stop that, stop the treadmill. Had myself at 39.02 for the final time. 39.02. So this can take a little quicker math in my head. You're at three. I believe that's a 3.48 final kilometer. You didn't really ramp it up on that final kilometer. Yeah, really that last 500 meters, just trying to do it. So yeah, 3902, I mean, I'll take that. I, that's, that's, I was scared today that I might not be able to break 40. So um, <laughs> you can see it's taken a lot out of me. I'm pretty sore at that point. Um, but uh, yeah, 39, 3902. Um, I'll take that. I'm really happy with that. It was it was a lot better than uh, than I was expecting. And uh, there you're making it official, at least for yourself, on your Garmin smartwatch. Yeah, and we had we had three separate watches on it today, so we uh, we made sure that that we'll you know have uh, have the right watch on it and um, and know what we did. So I think I gave a little bit of a post quick post analysis here at well, while some we point. wait for that we can uh, again remind you of the uh tamarack ottawa race weekend virtual event of course due to the ongoing COVID 19 pandemic register at uh, run ottawa <laughs> that was really hard work <laughs> <coughs> that last that last 5k was really hard uh that was a lot of fun though um yeah i'll be talking with adam about this, uh, but uh, this is a quick, quick postscript on that. Um, 10K on a treadmill inside with no fan is really hot. Um, I, mean, I did have a fan, I had my fan, but no cooling fan. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun, I'm really sweaty. Uh, I'm gonna put my mask back on and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. All right. Well, here we are uh, again after afterwards. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a very stressful last week of trying to figure out how to get this to be a live stream, and and that wasn't super successful. But I think what we did get working today was really fun. I really enjoyed uh, chatting to to you, Adam, about that and, and working our way through it. And. Uh, yeah, now that I've had 40 minutes to, to think about it, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm really happy with how that went. Um, 39.02 is a, is a really solid 10K time for me. So hopefully the judges think that it looked good. We'll, we'll sure to, be sure to keep you guys updated on, on that when we know that it's a, officially official. But um, 
yeah, thanks everyone for, for watching this and coming along with us while I set, uh, you know, set this 10K world record on the treadmill. Um, I just want to again thank, uh, thank the Ottawa Race Weekend for putting on the virtual, virtual Canadian Race Walking Championships. Uh, Noel Payne is instrumental in, uh, in helping set that up. So if you're a race walker, uh, anywhere around the world, if you're a race walker and you want to sign up for uh, the, to take part in the Canadian Race Walking Championships over 10K or a half marathon distance, head to runottawa.ca and sign up for the walking category. If you're just someone who wants to go and test how fast they can walk a 10K, same thing, go sign up, runottawa.ca. There's walking divisions for all the distances, 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, 50K, to see what you can do, whether it's 40 minutes or whether it's two hours. Um, you'll be doing a, a, a fantastic bout of, bout of exercise and it'll do you good. So uh, if you enjoyed this day and you want to go test yourself, go try it out. Um, I want to say thanks to, to Newfield as well, uh, who are my, you know, sponsoring me with my, with my shoes. Um, that was the kit I was wearing today. They've been amazing at helping me, uh, you know, maintain the ability to have something on my feet to wear. Uh, so that's been fantastic. And to Cielli as always for the awesome headgear. Uh, Adam, thank you so much. This was this was a lot of fun. Oh, my pleasure. It's uh, it's always nice to chat to you and, and that we get to do it, uh, sharing it with, uh, with everyone else. I know mom and dad will be happy watching this, knowing that we're getting along <laughs> and uh, and having a nice conversation. So if nothing nothing else, um, that's that's another positive that came from today. <laughs> so we'll. Uh, We'll sign out here, but again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to the Richmond Oval for helping us organize all of this, for dealing with my late night emails last night as we put the finishing touches on this. Uh, thanks to Sarah for sticking sticking by me and helping me out the last couple of days, really nailing this last little bit, um, for be willing, being willing to eat dinner at 11 o'clock last night when we got home. Um, and again, thanks to Elisa for lending me the camera and, and helping me set all this stuff up. Uh, couldn't have done it without, without you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone.